India has set another global record in coronavirus cases, reporting almost 380,000 new infections in the last day. Medical aid from abroad has started arriving in the country, but hospitals are still struggling with shortages of staff and supplies, including oxygen. India's healthcare system is so overwhelmed that many patients are being turned away. A COVID-19 ward in a hospital in Delhi. This hospital, like so many, full to overflowing. Medical staff stretched to the limit, some falling ill with the disease themselves, one reality in India's coronavirus emergency. And here's another. A woman receives oxygen outside a Sikh temple. She's not alone. There's no room for these people in Delhi's emergency wards. Relatives are left to cope with severely ill patients by themselves. One woman describes her mother's situation. It's been one week. She's, uh, she's having constant fever and now she is not even able to breathe. So the oxygen saturation was 80 till yesterday. In the night it became 60 and now it is 40. A long line outside a Delhi gas supplier. People doing what they can to save their loved ones. Some get the oxygen they need. But there isn't enough to go round. They're saying go home and if someone is dying there, then let them. They have nothing to do with our pain. They have no one in their house who's ill. The state of Delhi is reporting one death from COVID-19 every four minutes. And as the hospitals can't cope with the growing numbers of patients, so the cremation grounds are struggling to cope with the rising number of deaths. The funeral pyres are burning day and night. Delhi is one hotspot of India's COVID-19 emergency. Maharashtra state and the city of Mumbai is another. Here, vaccination centers ran out of supplies on Wednesday. India is one of the biggest producers of vaccines, but it doesn't have enough to vaccinate the next 600 million people who will become eligible for the jab. They're telling us that injections are not available as vaccines have not arrived. I registered to come here three days ago. I came all the way across the city and now they tell me. So they've given me a helpline number and told me to try again tomorrow. Amid the frustration and suffering this, a 105-year-old man and his 95-year-old wife have survived a COVID-19 infection. The family says they want that story to give hope to others. For many fighting the disease, hope and prayers are all they have to help them. I'm joined now by Iniat Singh Kakar, a volunteer working in, people's, in the People's Health Movement, India. Iniat, thanks for being with us. Uh, first of all, tell us, what are volunteer groups like yours doing to help? Right. Thank you so much, Terry, for having me. So um, uh, what volunteer groups are doing essentially is filling the information gap that currently exists. Um, so as we know, there are shortages of everything from beds to oxygen to, um, you know, be able to even accessing RT-PCR tests. And there is really no way for patients to know what is available where. The government has set up uh, an online portal to disseminate such information. But unfortunately, this is not in real time. Many times it is not uh, updated. Um, um, and so that is the gap that volunteer groups are filling by, one, providing information to people, uh, helping them access, you know, finding out where beds are available, getting, uh, uh, helping patients access ambulances to get there, uh, and providing, you know, I mean, sometimes even emotional support to families. What are the main problems that you're seeing right now in dealing with this pandemic? I think um, the biggest problems that we're seeing right now is uh, the shortages of, uh, of medical care. I mean, unfortunately, there's been very little uh, foresight in preparing for the pandemic. And as a result, we don't have enough hospitals. We don't have enough beds. We don't have enough oxygen. We don't have enough medicines. And now uh, it is an unfortunate reality that... Uh, you know, there are people who, who resort to black marketing to profit from even disasters and human suffering like this. So we are seeing a lot of black marketing of oxygen and uh, medicines, which uh, is leading, again, to shortages, uh, you know, of essential mm. supplies. So the biggest challenges are not being able to, I mean, and even for people at home, there are so many patients who haven't been able to even reach hospitals and their stories remain largely untold uh, currently. Um, so being mm. able to access even telemedicine, teleconsultations online is a big problem. 
them. Now, this is a desperate situation, of course. Uh, what kind of emotional toll is this taking on you and your fellow volunteers? Um, I mean, you know, India has never really stressed on psychosocial care. That's really not something that we have ever focused on, um, uh, you know, for decades. And um, and therefore, there's no support for volunteers who are dealing with patients. A lot of the volunteers are young. They have not done this kind of casework before. Uh, and, you know, they, they have patients who have died uh, on them, patients they've been trying to help. Patients have died just as they've reached the hospital in waiting areas at home. And, of course, you know, given the large systemic uh, shortages. We're not able to help everybody who comes to us, particularly the most critical cases. And seeing people uh, die, having to emotionally support families and feeling like you, you know, like you couldn't do enough, uh, I think is very, very distressing at the moment. Um, and it is leading to, uh, it is leading to a sense of helplessness and fear about the current situation. Now, some people watching this might be wondering what they themselves could do to help. What sort of advice would you offer them? Um, I think, I think, you know, one of the things that people can do is reach out to your Indian friends who, uh, you know, to in, in Germany, because, uh, I mean, a lot of them would have family here who would either be corona positive or, you know, would be living in that fear. So I would say try to provide that emotional support to them. A lot of Indians would also know of verified resources uh, and organizations and groups to which one can donate. And I think uh, particularly we need to be supporting organizations that are providing oxygen for free, that are providing ambulances to patients and that are providing teleconsultations to patients. Um, there okay. are also organizations who are now trying to set up beds, yes. Iniat Singh Kakar, yes. uh, volunteering in Delhi. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Let's take a look now at some of the other developments in the pandemic worldwide. Vaccine maker Moderna says it is ramping up global manufacturing. New production lines are being set up in Europe and elsewhere, aiming to create 3 billion shots by 2022. The EU has accused Beijing and Moscow of state-sponsored disinformation campaigns against Western-developed COVID-19 vaccines while promoting their own. And Europe has now recorded more than 50 million coronavirus infections. That's about one-third of the total number of cases worldwide.